Okay, I want to take the time to go over a little bit more um, on um, SN1 and SN2. So what I'm going to do in this video is go over like some 8-9 problems um, and give you in a fill-in-the-blank type of a way so that you actually learn, you know, in terms of what are the various different factors that we discussed in class also. We did several problems, so I'm going to just again reiterate the uh, important ones and again like I said in class it's a good idea when I write down the problem you should probably work it out yourself I mean you can view and then work on it but then beyond a point it's a good idea to pause it and um, try to solve it and then uh, match it whether or not you have the correct answer all right let's take a look at the first one one two three four there's a bromine maybe I'm going to treat it with any OCH3, methanol, and 0 degrees Celsius. And I want to figure out what the product is. Notice in this case, like I said in class, the first and foremost thing to take a look at is your substrate. Substrate means what is your reactant. That's what you have to pay attention to. And if that is a primary center, hands down, it is always going to be an SN2 reaction. In this particular case, that SN2 is actually supported by the fact that you have a good nucleophile. You do have a protic solvent, but that's okay. Like I said, a primary, uh, a primary halide has no other choice but to go through an SN2. And so, or E2, but in this case, since we have in such a low temperature, as we learn later um, about eliminations, so uh, we'll go with SN2. So inversion of configuration is what you're seeking. Attack is going to take place from the back. So if you're uh, going, if you have to show the mechanism, that's what we would show that the attack is going to occur from the back. Your transition state probably will look like the BR is ready to leave. And the CN is pointing in the opposite direction. And then ultimately, your product will look like this. Oh, I'm sorry, not CN, OCH3. 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 Okay, let's take a look at another one. So we have here um, a secondary halide. which is being treated with NaSCH2CH3 DMF 0 degrees Celsius and you have to figure out what your what your products are realize this is the case that I like to call a mudatarian case um, it could go one way or the other and the reason for that is because your uh, starting material, the substrate, is a secondary uh, halide, and for that matter, you have to think about what's on the arrow. And I told you that if you have a metal, that becomes an A+, plus, and if you have to make keep this neutral, that means the sulfur will have to go with a negative charge. So sulfur with the CH2 and the CH3 is your nucleophile, and it's a good nucleophile. It's, in fact, a better nucleophile than the one with oxygen. And in this case, since you have a polar aprotic solvent, polar aprotic, recall from class, polar protic means protons are available, polar aprotic means anything which is not water, alcohol, acetic acid, so acetone, DMF, DMSO, acetonitrile, dichloromethane, chloroform, anything other than water, alcohol, and acetic acid is going to be polar aprotic. So this is calling out loud again that this is going to be SN2 reaction mechanism. Both the good nucleophile and the polar aprotic solvent are going to support this. Um, and so the attack again is going to take place in the backward direction. So the attack occurs from here. Seal wants to go. So you can show that as a as a dashed line if you want. Delta negative, delta positive, and SCH2CH3 with a negative charge. So if this were chiral, and it is chiral, um, you would 
end up with you would end up with inversion of configuration and that's going to be your that's going to be your product okay let's go forward all right so this one is a pretty simple one ch3i with nano2 what would it go through it will go through SN2 again because it's a metal. Carbocation is going to be very unstable. So you have a good leaving group. You have a good nucleophile. It's calling out loud attack from the back. You end up getting CH3, NO2. Reaction proceeds through the SN2 reaction mechanism. Okay. Um, I now have a case where I have what is what this group is called as is a tosylate and that comes from tosic acid that means if OTS leaves with a negative sign and you add a proton to that you will get tosic acid the name itself suggests should suggest that tosylate is a good leaving group good leaving group and I'm going to treat that with water. And we're going to, you know, keep it room temperature so we're not heating it or anything. And you have to predict um, what kind of product you're going to see. What, what kind of major product you're going to see. Now, notice tosylate is a good leaving group. And it is present on a tertiary center. This guy is a tertiary center. What that means is that... This would want to leave and leave behind a stable carbocation. And why is that forming? It's forming because this is going to go through an SN1 reaction profile. And that means energetically you're going to see the two humps and the value of that is where the intermediate is going to be. And now when water has to attack, it is going to attack from either the top or the bottom. And it will give you a mixture of products you're going to see essentially um, a racemic mixture. In this case, it doesn't matter because it's all three, you know, methyl groups. Um, but realize the, that the attack could occur from top or bottom. In this case, it doesn't matter. I'm just showing that to you that it goes through uh, both uh, attack from top and bottom. So you don't forget that... Um, the SN1 reaction mechanism goes through racemization, and in this case, we were able to get to the fact that it's an SN1 so quickly because it was a tertiary um, uh, substrate with a leaving group that was present at the tertiary center, and that's what you need to focus on. Okay, let's go forward. All right, let's take a look at what we have over here. We again have a tertiary halide. We are treating that with uh, methanol room temperature. So the fact that it is tertiary should call out loud to you. It is SN1. That is right. And that means that it is going to go through the carbocation. So again, draw the carbocation for the SN1. And the attack is going to take place with the OH coming in from top or from the bottom. So you first show the way we did it in wikis. You first show the OCH3 and the H with a positive charge. And then another molecule of the methanol is going to come in and take away that. You can show that with BR as well. So your product is going to look like OCH3 has substituted the BR in an SN1 reaction mechanism. And it happens because you have a good leaving group here and you um, you can carry out the reaction um, essentially with a poor nucleophile. Similar is the case for the next one in which instead of bromine you have iodine now and you're treating that with water. So that will add HOH. So OH is your nucleophile, really, but the reaction has to go through water, of course. OH is going to get added. Uh, it's SN1 because you have a tertiary system. So good leaving group, low temperatures, which is why it's a substitution reaction, um, and that will be your product. 
uh, last one on this particular slide is you have an allylic bromide and you're treating that with an AOCH3. Now notice that is a primary center, but more than just primary, it is, it is also um, resonance stabilized. Um, in this case, because you have the presence of the NaOCH3, which is a good, um, this is a good nucleophile, you would say this goes through SN2. But a substrate such as this, um, because it is primary, but the fact that it is allylic, the carbocation that you will get is also very stable. So allylic is similar to secondary that, you know, it can go through SN1 or SN2 depending on the reaction conditions. Um, and so in this case, since you have a good nucleophile, you're going to say it's SN2 where the attack is going to take place from the back and the BR is going to leave and your product will look like uh, the OCH3 right over here and it is an SN2. On the other hand, if you would have seen the same reaction but now with just methanol, so the methoxide would have been missing. We are making a subtle change and that is that your solvent is now going to act as a nucleophile and since I said that bromine could potentially leave and leave behind the allyl allylic carbocation which by the way is resonance stabilized. Uh, anytime you do have a stable carbocation is going to be supported by SN1. So in that case you would say the reaction goes through SN1. Uh, and it's a more stable intermediate and the attack is now going to take place on your on your carbocation through the oxygen so you will end up with O, CH3 and H and then the BR is going to pick up the proton so you get O and then CH3 as your as your product and this is done in an SN1 manner double hump two step process valley happens to be the very stable carbocation okay let's just try another one um, since we are talking about carbocations and uh, the stability of carbocations and how you can make the system more stable uh, let's say you're given a reaction you have a double bond you're treating that with HBr um, essentially, BR leaves, reaction occurs to give you the more stable carbocation. Right now it has a five-membered ring. It's going to give you the positive charge at the tertiary center versus the primary center. So all that is good. And you would be tempted that the BR should probably go and, you know, attack over here. And your product probably looks like this and yeah that will be like one of the minor products but the major product would would involve a shift how about shifting it if you move one of those bonds what would happen so one two three four five and this is six that means now instead of making the one two bond you're making the two six bond so I'm going to get a uh, I'm going to get a, a six-membered ring. And, and uh, a positive charge. So one is connected to six, at which we have uh, two methyl groups, three and five so the positive charge is over here and the BR minus is going to attack and you get a BR now realize uh, it's really is a is 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 the question between um, how stable is the six member ring as against how stable is the tertiary carbocation so in this case you will see both uh, the products going but if this ring size were let's say you know like a butane or a propane like a butane becoming a five member ring that definitely will will go through for that reason uh, that the um, angle strain in the butane is going to carry out 
um, the reaction in the forward direction uh, and the shift will take place. So just be aware of when you have the carbocation, just ask if you can carry out a 1-2 hydride shift or a methyl shift of some kind. And again, in the wikis, we had a flavor to that one. And that will give you uh, a good a good view of what's going on. I think I'm going to do like one more prepare question perhaps, and that'll be it. So if you have, let's say, let's say you have two chlorobutane, and you want to convert it into a dichlorobutane, but the chlorines are the same place, what would you do? Well, first things first, if you want to put two CLs, those would come with what you might have done is you might have added two HCLs and two HCLs would mean somehow you have to get like an alkyne so the aim is how do you go from the halogenated compound to the alkyne you have to obviously go through the double bond so my first step would be to treat it with NaOH and KOH some kind of a some kind of a base so that basically gives you an alkene I'm going to treat that with a Cl2 now so that I get a dichloro product and I'm going to then treat that with two moles of NaOH so that two HCLs are lost and you can get you can get your desired alkyne and now if you treat that with if you treat that with uh, two HCLs is going to add, the first mole of HCL is going to add and give you, according to the Markovnikov's rule, and it can be either or in this particular case, uh, but once you have set the H and the CL, now the next HCL is going to go in a manner to give you the geminal dihalide, and that's going to be your final product.